Hello, good morning and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John and thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. I've come down to Sunbury on Thames in southwest London where we find Junction 1 of the M3. The M3 is a motorway that runs from London to Southampton and is approximately 61 miles long. Gnarly! The first section of the M3 opened in 1971, with a second joining section coming along a bit later in 1974. These sections ran from London down to Popham, which is just outside Basingstoke. At this point, planning and funding had only been awarded to this section of the M3, and it wouldn't be later on until the 1980s that they continued to go south towards Southampton. The last section to be built ran around Winchester from Bridges Farm to Bar End and opened in 1995. Our plan today is to head south on the M3 starting at Junction 1. There's not really a lot to see at Junction 1, so moving on, we discovered this underpass that takes you underneath the M3. I'll stick a map up so you can see its location, so if you fancy checking it out for yourself, you know where to go. As you can see, it's rather short. I don't know why, maybe it was intended for something else. Shortly after leaving Junction 1, you might catch a glimpse of Thorpe Park. This well-known theme park is built on an old gravel pit that came about following the demolition of the Thorpe Park estate in the 1930s. When the gravel pits were expended, the landowners flooded vast portions of the site. And it was here in 1975 that the Water Ski World Championships was held. The flooding by the previous landowners explains why in this area there's an awful lot of lakes and the M3 just passes right through them. It was in 19 1979 that Thorpe Park opened as an outdoor activity park before quickly growing into one of the UK's most loved theme parks. The first roller coaster arrived on site in 1984. Here's a little side quest for you to do should you decide to visit this area. One of our filming locations used today puts us right alongside Thorpe Park and if you notice just behind me in the trees there you'll find what's left of the Canada Creek Railway and some of the original loggers leap rides that are now sat there not being used. Who can resist an abandoned theme park ride so I had to investigate further and we've managed to get a few shots. Happy days! I got slightly sidetracked by abandoned theme rides there. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Moving on though, we're gonna leave Thorpe Park for now and carry on up the M3 and shortly after, if you look to your left, you might notice a hill. This hill was originally known as Mount Elderbury. However, in the 14th century, a chapel was built on site that was named after St. Anne. Since then, the hill has been known as St. Anne's Hill. Well, 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 what have we here? Hidden in the trees just near the M25 and M3 interchange is what's called Nun's Well. This natural well has clearly been here for quite a long time. How long? Well, nobody knows for sure. It's possible that it was built alongside the chapel all those years ago. However, the first mention of it in any document is dated around 1700. Even so, that makes it over 300 years old. As we continue our journey towards Southampton, Long Cross Studios is to be found between junctions two and three. The site is effectively cut in half by the M3, with one half containing the workshops and indoor studios, and the other half containing the outdoor film sets and a test track. It's the test track that naturally we're most interested in. This was actually here before the studios came along. It used to be home to the Military Vehicles Engineering Establishment, or MAVI for short. They set up the site in the early 1940s. Fly. The Mavi were responsible for many innovations in tank and armoured vehicle designs and it was at this site just off Cobham Lane where they tested a lot of these vehicles. In the 1960s, a composite s dogs. In the 1960s, a composite ceramic armour was developed here and since then the term Cobham Armour has been used to describe any sort of ceramic armour. The Minley or Minley Road Bridge crosses the M3 between junctions 4A and 5 and if you take a look at this bridge you might notice on the top how wide it is. Most peculiar, why is this? Upon construction and design, remarkably they thought about the future and built this bridge wide enough to accommodate a proper dual carriageway. The reason they did this is because there was the odd idea floating around of turning Minley or Minley Road into a full-length dual carriageway that would run up to the nearby Blackbush Airport. This never happened of course but the bridge remains ready and waiting for a dual carriageway that will never come. A short distance up the road is Fleet Services. 
Fleet Services is home to the Scott Mills Bridge. When we visited last year, the signs had been removed. However, I've been reliably informed that they've now been reinstated. So if you'd like to visit the Scott Mills Bridge, you'll need to be going to Fleet Services. Speaking of service stations, between Junction 6 and 7 is where we'll find the site of the proposed Kempshot services. If we take a look at this aerial photograph showing the M3 during its construction phase, we can see that they were quite set on having a service station here. Following two applications from companies who wished to operate the site that were rejected on the grounds of their proposals not doing the site justice, it was reopened for tender, but there was very little interest from any other developers. In 2016, the legendary Apple Green proposed that they might build a service station here. However, that idea was withdrawn in 2017. There's not much left of the site now, with half of it now covered with a housing estate. However, there are a set of ghost slip roads that remain in place, and you can see these from the Garlic Lane Bridge that crosses the M3. Between junctions eight and nine, you might spot this hidden junction. As always, it allows the emergency services and the highways maintenance vehicles access and exit from the main carriageway. But I do wonder if at some point it did actually serve as a junction allowing access to the A33 that's just next door. I'm not sure. The sections between junctions nine and 10 take the M3 around Winchester. Carrying Arlesford Road across the motorway is what's known as Spitfire Bridge. Spitfire Bridge opened in around 1940 when the Winchester Bypass was built. At this point, the M3 hadn't even been thought about. It was a concrete parabolic arch bridge, and what's remarkable is that in 1941, Canadian World War II pilot George Rogers flew his aircraft right underneath it. Whilst doing so, he clipped a heavy goods vehicle and caused damage to a three-foot section of his airplane. Rogers made it back to base, but crashed when landing due to the damage caused. Fortunately, he walked away with only minor injuries. Why he decided to do this is a little bit of an unknown. Most likely because he could, and interestingly, he wasn't flying a Spitfire. He was, in fact, a Curtis Tomahawk. This fact was only realised much later on in 1988, some 47 years later. It was assumed at the time that only a Spitfire would have been capable of such a feat, and the name has stuck ever since. The lovely bridge was demolished in 1983 following widening of the carriageways and replaced with this absolute concrete monstrosity. Junction 11 is a little bit strange. At first glance, you'd think it's missing a set of slip roads. That's not actually the case, and you'll find the missing set of slip roads half a mile up the road from here, with the Hockley Link Road joining it all together. This rather odd junction is known as Hockley Cross, and it's most likely the way it is because of the topography in the area. Whilst you're looking at Junction 11, have a look in the trees and you might spot the Hockley Railway Viaduct. It's an unused viaduct that was built in the 1880s and there's absolutely no way I was going to ignore this. Who doesn't love an old viaduct? It was originally called the Shawford Viaduct and it provided a link between the Didcot, Newbury and Southampton Railway with the fuck wasp. Ah, 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 ah. It was originally called the Shawford Viaduct and provided a link between the Didcot, Newbury and Southampton railways to the London and South West Main Line Railway. The Shawford Viaduct is unique because it was one of the earliest modern structures to be built with a concrete core, with bricks added to the outside purely for aesthetics. The viaduct saw its last train in 1966 and it should come as no surprise that it was closed as a result of beaching. Since then it sat mostly unused but in 2013 it had a grand reopening following extensive restoration work. It now makes up part of the National Cycle Network Route number 23. Not much of a cyclist me though. <laughs> Here's one that maybe we can work out together. At Junction 13, or the Eastleigh Interchange, it would appear that there's a section of abandoned road. A small section of it is most likely used by the emergency services as an access road, but the section I'm stood on now clearly hasn't been used for years. My guess is that once upon a time, the slip roads exiting and joining the motorway both came down to the same point. However, as the years have gone by and the carriageway widened, I think the slip roads have been moved to other locations. If anyone's got any further details, please leave a comment. Let me know what the score is. As we reach the end of the M3 at Junction 14, we're presented with a choice. It's left to Portsmouth or right to Bournemouth. 
But what if you want to head into Southampton? You might have noticed if you're heading south that the motorway will want to send you left down a slip road. Not a problem with that, but you can also just carry on along the M3. It seems you've actually got two options in terms of exiting the motorway. Which begs the question, why did it need that slip road putting in in the first place if they all arrive at the same point? And that's all for today, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, there's a button specifically for that. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John, you've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I shall see you guys next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Until then, take care. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. <laughs>